Ten Swiss Speed is a series of exhibitions which take place in the entrance hall of the museum. It's a freely accessible area where the museum marks its interest and engagement in contemporary art. The public will always find a new production and new engagement with the today's creativity, specifically with the reaction to the space. When you enter in to the structure, you're unaware of what exists beyond the kind of wall of the gallery. And you enter through a doorway that takes you through, which is built at a slight angle, just to sort of obscure your view of the sort of object that lies at the back of the room immediately. You're then invited in to walk around into this very simple kind of cross of corridors in which on each plane of each side is a hole knocked into the central cubes through which you can look into a mirrored sort of section and the light shines through and the effect is almost of sort of small encampments or uh, communities sort of like through, through a desert landscape mirrored into infinity. And obviously you walk out, you, you then walk into the sort of second sort of chamber which is kind of mirrored but back to front. and then it appears the exit is the entrance and there's possibly a moment of sort of confusion. Mike, instead of occupying a space, he creates a space. Therefore, wherever the work is being installed, it's insulated from the outside. There is not a direct relation to the walls and to the size and the scale of the given space. He recreates a world insulated from the rest. It's called Amnesiac Shrine. The Amnesiac Shrines came about in 2004 and came on the back of sort of like an, another body of work called the Amnesiacs in the late, mid late 90s. The Amnesiacs are kind of complicated in that they came about uh, during a residency in the northeast of England. I wrote this uh, proposal for this residency. Lone Beach Coma is somehow trying to uh, decipher the sort of debris that's washed up upon the, so the shores of uh, the coast of well, of any continent ultimately, but in this case of the North Sea in the north of England, sort of, and seeing it almost as a language and sort of decoding it. In a way, there's a very strong reference to sort of another science fiction writer from the 60s and 70s, a Polish writer called Stanislaw Lem, who wrote a novel called Solaris, where a planet called Solaris is an intelligent entity in itself. In using this structure, I kind of invented this stepping down of a fictional genre from science fiction, which was used often by the Soviet science fiction writers to bypass the census to talk about the human condition, the political situation in their own country, but to step it down to sort of like a, a biker genre where the cosmonauts became you know, bikers, which seemed somehow very apt in, in the north of England somehow. Um, and they were latterly sort of named the amnesiacs, but this was where I suppose the story gets slightly more complicated in that uh, a very close friend of mine who I worked with, and in fact I built a show in Amsterdam in W139 within 1995, just a year before he died. He kind of fell from a mountain and died the very first weekend that I was working. So in a sense, this sort of sense of loss, which is very much sort of bound up with the sort of story of Solaris in terms of the, the main protagonist, Chris Kelvin, was somehow made far more real within this sort of uh, fiction that I was trying to sort of, uh, um, I suppose, utilise. In the same way that the amnesiacs constructed things in their former incarnation, constructed through flashback, which in a way was an analogy to sort of how I felt after the death of a friend. You know, you had this idea of a life that existed before, which looked exactly the same, but felt completely different. An example would be the fire that you see in the rooms. Fire somehow, it's an attempt to depict the imagery of a fire, and yet without any knowledge that it produces light or heat, but also depicts this kind of very formative moment in humanity somehow, but in a very impotent sort of way. The language of Mike Nelson was really fitting in, uh, in what I was looking for, which was not just a change of the partial experience, but there was this dichotomy between the material and the spirit, which was very strong. Maybe the both were equal. By this I mean the use of the flashbacks and the use of the idea of déjà vu, of playing with your own memory. I thought it could have been interesting to stress the idea of the flashback, 
which is inherent to the, to the work itself and of the déjà vu by reconstructing a work uh, by Mike Nelson. Something akin to sort of the, a shrine where, if you were to make the analogy between a, a, to a voodoo shrine, say where a, an object from everyday life, like a cigarette, would be taken as a sort of a gift and put upon the shrine as a gift to the gods and suddenly it elevated its kind of position or you would take a receptacle to sort of take the liquid from a sacrifice, then this bowl would then become sort of sacred. And in the same way, I could take uh, the motifs or sort of structures of uh, other, other artists, but imagining in a, such a way that I had no knowledge of what it was because I was an amnesiac somehow. And then to sort of like somehow construct something out of these kind of motifs and imagery sort of um, um, that was devotional as opposed to a sort of pluralistic sort of a, um, kind of play in sort of like of, of, of genres. The first one was in 2004, which was called uh, Amnesiac Shrine or Double Coop Displacement, uh, which was a sort of an attempt to somehow marry sort of certain sort of like um, elements of Bruce Nauman, Paul Tech and Robert Smithson. Whereas with this work, it took the idea of Robert Morris's uh, mirrored cubes, but somehow inverted them, made them introspective, looking at back in, in upon themselves. The collection of Bormann is uh, comprises of double steel cakes by Bruce Nauman. In this work, the artist is preoccupied with the concept of uh, reuse and recycle and uh, physical uh, entropy. With Paul Tech, I would think of meat cable. And there are a number of analogies, and these analogies, they don't, they're not restricted only to meat cable and amnesty shrine by Mike Nelson. Paul Tech was interested in addressing the dichotomies between uh, the material and the spiritual, what is attractive and what re is repulsive. Mike works along the same lines, but both artists share this practice of art that goes uh, beyond art itself that enters into life and then personal and universal experience are fused. I always imagine that the amnesiacs were born out of the Gulf War, because the biker gangs are always born out of wars, you know, the Hells Angels out of the Second World War, the sort of bandidos out of Vietnam, that is a, always a strong disenchanted male element that somehow led me to imagine this imaginary biker gang born out of like a, the most recent war of that time, which was the, uh, the, the Gulf War. So there's always a potential kind of reference to criticism, a political critique, I suppose, sort of like in, in relation to that. And I suppose that's emulated in the sort of like the rather lengthy title as a metaphorical landscape. I like long titles that somehow try to explain, but at the same time become sort of almost absurd. This work we are presenting has a strong political position on one side, but also addresses uh, the individual and the individual responds in its own you know, way to it. So not political in a very linear way that points the finger against the current problem, but more as a, as a position in life.